So yesterday, um, an American military surveillance drone was uh, shot down somewhere near the borders of Iran. The Iranian authorities are claiming that it was transgressing Iranian airspace, whereas the Americans are saying that it wasn't. Now, the point is, what was this kind of high-tech military equipment uh, by the U.S. doing anywhere near Iranian borders? What are, in fact, um, U.S. aircraft carriers, U.S. troops, U.S. Uh, bombers and, and jets doing anywhere uh, in the Gulf or in, the, in, the, in that region, the Middle East, which is far, from, uh, far, far away from U.S. borders? The Americans are also accusing the Iranians of ramping up aggression around the Persian Gulf and around the Strait of Hormuz. And they accuse them of having uh, caused a series of explosion on oil tankers in the, in the last period. But um, why would the Iranians deny this while they would take responsibility for downing the, 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 the US drone? Uh, what do the Iranians ha have of interest in doing this? And also, which, which interest do they even have in, in blowing up, in, in causing these explosions? In fact, one of the ships, uh, wa which was a, a Japanese oil tanker, was, uh, was hit at the same time as the Prime Minister of Japan was in Iran, uh, trying to actually talk about or initiate some form of uh, talks w through Japan with, with the Americans to calm down the situation, something that many people in the U.S. oppose, but that the Iranians actually were seen to welcome. The other ship which was, uh, which was hit was actually uh, staffed with 50% Russian crews. Again, Russia is a close ally of the Iranians. So why would they, in fact, go uh, so far as, 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 as causing these things, uh, especially you know, hitting two countries that they are attempting to uh, maintain a sort of collaboration with? The fact is they don't have any interest uh, in, in these things. In fact, the Iranians, uh, for a long time, has done everything they could, has bent over backwards, to appear to be civilized and dependable. And at no, at, at no time have they taken this type of unilateral, unilateral uh, uh, un, uh, how do you say, um, uh, unprovoked actions against anyone in the, in, in the region. In fact, whereas the Americans and the EU have not abided by the nuclear deal that, the, that they signed with the Iranians a few years ago, the Iranians have followed it uh, by you know, every dot and comma. Uh, the fact is that the Iranian regime wants a deal with the West. It wants to prove to them that it's dependable, that it can be relied upon, that they can collaborate with it, and that it can be partners of the West uh, in, in, in the Middle East. So why would they risk all of this that they've built up for years, in fact, uh, by doing these reckless actions, which, which, are, uh, which they are, you know, blowing up uh, or causing explosions on oil tankers in this region can have severe uh, influences on uh, oil prices globally and on, on the world economy. They wouldn't. They have no interest in this type of aggression. But there are others who do. Uh, in particular, Saudi Arabia uh, and, and Israel, uh, and also a National Security Advisor John Bolton and the Hawks in the Republican Party, who all see uh, uh, Iran uh, as an as ex existential threat. In particular, the regimes in Saudi Arabia and Israel who feel threatened by uh, the rise of Iranian influence in a region which they have always seen as their backyard, where they could do whatever they wanted to uh, uh, unopposed, basically. These people are not interested in any kind of rapprochement between uh, the Iran and, and, uh, Iran and the Americans. And in fact, they have been, all of them, calling incessantly for a war on, on Iran. It was John Bolton. Uh, someone who is also very center, very um, key to the um, to, to to leading in the lead up to the war, uh, with the U.S. war in Iraq, who has been calling for a long time for preemptively, in fact, bombing uh, Iran. Now, the uh, Israelis and, and Saudis has have actually been doing the same thing, and in fact, together they form the centers of reaction and counter revolution. In the, throughout the, 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 the Middle East. And as opposed to them, Iran has in fact not been carrying out any unprovoked aggressions against any other nations in recent times. It was the US 
uh, which who start, we started the wars uh, against two of Iran's neighbors, against Iran and Afghanistan, leading, costing the lives of more than a million people, destroying two countries uh, completely, leading to barbarism uh, and, uh, and all the things that we know. Uh, it was the U.S. along with its Gulf allies, uh, Jordan and Turkey, who started this campaign of sectarianizing the, the Syrian civil war in order to overthrow uh, uh, the Syrian's president, uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. It was uh, Saudi Arabia that started the war against Yemen, which is now, uh, you know, which is basically uh, pushing that country towards barbarism if it hasn't already done so. It's been Israel who's been leading these barbaric wars uh, against the, the Palestinian people and also against Leban Lebanon, uh, constantly threatening of new wars against these and also have been attacking, in fact, Syria over the last periods, period. Um, now, they accuse Iran of being deceptive and being aggressive and so on, but Iran has stuck to all of the agreements, in fact, uh, that it has made with the West. Uh, on the contrary, the Americans uh, never uh, abided by that deal, uh, in fact, fully. And also, they, the, the Trump administration tore up that nuclear deal, and not only that, but imposed crippling sanctions on, on the country, which is really driving down the Iranian economy towards the abyss. Uh, so the, the Iranian rial has lost 60% of its value over the past year. Imported goods are drying up to a large extent. Red meat, poultry meats in general uh, have seen their prices increase 57%. Eggs and cheese and so on, dairies have seen their prices go up around 40%. Housing and, uh, and medicine has seen prices go up by, by 20%. And these are official figures. In fact, reality is far, far worse than this. And all of this comes up on top of years of uh, decline in the economic position of the Iranian uh, masses, which have, been, which have been declining uh, as a result of sanctions, which the U.S. administrations since uh, after the Iranian revolution has been, have been imposing on I Iran, uh, uh, crippling the, the whole of the economy. Now, this is nothing short of an economic war. Uh, the, the, the U.S., the Trump administration is claiming that it's fighting on behalf of the Iranian people, but these, but these are the people who are suffering. In fact, this is having an effect of strengthening the regime. Last year, b b before all of this really took off, we saw uh, uh, on a daily basis, in fact, mass protests or big protests happening throughout Iran. Workers, students, uh, and all kinds of uh, layers coming out uh, fighting against the regime, which they see as dictatorial and corrupt um, and for better living standards. But after, you know, as these uh, sanctions have been hitting more and more, and the Americans have been uh, driving up. Uh, the rhetoric uh, and the war rhetoric, in fact, pe the, the protests are dying down as people are rallying behind uh, the regime in defense of the nations. Because no matter how much they hate the, 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 the regime and the, and the clerics, they hate U.S. imperialism far more than that. And they can see from Iraq, from Afghanistan, and from Syria what U.S. intervention, what Western intervention in Iran really means. Uh, so this whole thing, this whole imperialist campaign that's going on and which will uh, probably be escalated in the next period is nothing but reactionary from every single po point of view and it's the duty of all those who have the interests of the Iranian people at heart to oppose it.